What's up guys? It's your boy Matty Ice Leads for Locals and in this video I want to show you how to get terrible results with your Google Ads. That's right, terrible results. Uh, so these are the, like the first like real main Google Ads campaigns that I've really run that I've really put some effort into and uh, you're going to see like the engagement was fantastic but uh, the, the results themselves were absolutely terrible and the process was such a nightmare and I wanted to make this video because uh, quite frankly, I'm like, I'm, I'm kind of just sick and tired of seeing people out there that say these things are so freaking easy to do when it's not, man. Like, and, and this is why, uh, like in my academy, I, I don't put anything into my academy until I've tested it. I've run a successful campaign and, and you're going to see exactly why, because you, it's not as simple as going into Google and creating a campaign a lot. Sometimes it is, not usually though. Like I've run YouTube, like discovery ads, a couple of uh, TrueView uh, ads or whatever, and that's fine. The YouTube ads are actually pretty easy, but when it comes to Google ads, man, you've got to make sure your I's are dotted, T's are crossed, everything, because this has been an absolute, I guess just like when I compare it to my experience with Facebook, um, it's, a, it's a nightmare. Like Facebook, a little bit of a learning curve, but they have a lot of basic shit uh, done correctly. Like, and, and I'm finding that Google doesn't, and I don't know why. So, uh, and, and uh, just as a side note, I'm trying to get the light out of there. Uh, just as a side note, uh, I'm going to do a separate video where uh, I'll show you the result because I'm running a Facebook campaign for for this tar like this audience, this offer as well. Uh, and we're getting two dollars and eighty seven cent leads uh, name and email, getting high ticket people into the pipeline. It's freaking awesome. So I know like when I see when I see that my Facebook results and then I see the engagement on these uh, Google ads because the engagement was fantastic. I know that my targeting is on point. My message is on point. The offer is good. There's interest. But there, there's something in these campaigns that's not working. So that's what I want to show you. And eventually, I'm going to show you the, the success of this, too. Because um, I guess what I what I want to do here is uh, just, I guess, show you that, like, these things, it's a process. And, and the only way you really learn these things, these, these, like, minute, finer details of what makes a campaign work is just doing it. Because I watched dozens of Google ad um, videos before I did this, like, cause I want to make sure I understand the platform and, and how things work, whatnot. And I still made the mistakes like, and, and just basic shit that nobody tells you about because they're not showing you like real campaigns they are giving you basic shit on how to set up a campaign. So here's what happened. Uh, I want to start actually with my search campaign and then we'll get into display ads. So search campaign, I can't even believe this happened. Uh, basically, so so here, here's the, the audience that we're going after and what our uh, offer is. So we are, uh, I'm, I'm testing, I'm, I'm trying, I'm getting into like a retirement planning, annuities, uh, IULs, things like that. And we're trying to run a test campaign with a partner, a potential client. Uh, so uh, that's our that's our industry because it, it could be really really high ticket. Uh, I mean, they can make a, a really high commissions on on uh, in this industry, right? So that's our industry, and we're basically offering a tax free retirement guide. So the first product that we're offering is Index Universal Life Insurance for Retirement Planning. Not going to get into the details of why, whatnot. That's just our offer. Okay, so I basically took my process with Facebook, and I'm trying to apply it to to Google. And what I really liked about the search campaign is that search campaigns, you can use a Google lead ad form, which if you guys have been following my channel for any amount of time, you know, I love Facebook lead forms. That's a, a great way for getting people like top of funnel into your ecosystem and then implementing a really good, you know, retargeting, follow up and, and funnel and all that stuff. So when I learned that Google had lead forms, I was super pumped. Like, dude, I can take the power of search marketing where people are searching and when they click on the ad, it pops up a form. I no longer have to send people to a landing page. I love that. So that's what I got really excited about. And I, I was even on the phone with a Google rep and the dude was, he was, the guy was pretty solid. Um, he wasn't like your, your typical like call center, like this guy actually ran ads. And I was kind of surprised that he did not point this out. Um, because he told me like, dude, your, your keywords are on point, man. You, you, your campaigns look really good. And so here's what happened. You can see, oops, sorry, I'm getting a call. You, you can see that uh, it was pretty good. Like at one, uh, 1.33% 1 uh, click through rate, a uh, dollar 57 per click for like this type of industry is, I mean, 
to me, that's pretty good, man. Like going after people who are, are searching for retirement planning, tax-free options, things like that. Because again, those are high ticket, uh, potentially clients, right? So $1.57 per click yeah. to me, in my mind, that's that's fantastic. Like I was expecting a lot more than that. So I saw this and I'm, I'm like, yes, man, like I'm getting really good clicks. And what I know about lead forms, at least on my with my experience on Facebook, is that uh, you should convert like between 30 to 50%. Like my lead forms have con like, I've had a 65% uh, conversion rate on lead forms before. So your conversion rate should be a lot better than your, like if you were to send them to a landing page typically, right? So I'm like, oh dude, maybe I, I probably have like seven or eight leads in here. This is awesome. So I click and there's a, like, if you look here, zero conversions. So I'm like, wait a minute, that can't be right. Maybe it, like is my uh, my lead form not uh, set up correctly, or what, what, what's going on here? So I start do I start trying to dive into it because the platform using Google, I love how they say it's uh, easy like easy online advertising. It's it's not like it's an incredibly difficult platform to use. <sighs> so uh, which um, is why I do this and then put it in my academy so that you guys don't struggle with this anymore because it's a disaster. Anyways. So um, here, here's where you go to check your lead form, right? So I, it's because it technically it's an extension. So I went to my extensions here and watch this. And I haven't updated this yet because I'm actually putting in a support requests or whatever with Google. Be like, dude, are you guys freaking serious right now? This is, this is ridiculous. So look at this. My lead form is disapproved. Does that make sense? Like, okay, you, um, you, you disapprove my lead form. All right, that's fine. I I I, I can uh, change it. But why are you running my ad? Why are you allowing my ad to run if the very thing I'm trying to send them to, which is created on your platform, is disapproved? And look, you can see it had zero impressions. Because guys, a lead form when when somebody clicks on the ad and you have a lead form set up. It pops up like you, you, it, they don't leave the platform they're on. It just pops up on their screen. That's how a lead form works. So with every click, it should be an impression. So I should have 20 impressions right here. Zero, zero. Like, and I'm looking at it like, <laughs> so you're charging me to run an ad, get clicks, and I'm using a tool on your platform to generate the lead, which you disapproved and I had no idea like it, they don't, they don't warn you like Facebook does like, Hey, your ad's been disapproved or your lead forms been disapproved. I had no idea because in my mind, it makes sense. If the lead form is disapproved, like my ad should be disapproved because it's part of my ad. It's the only reason my ad exists is to use the lead form. So I'm glad I caught it fast because I only spent like $31 or whatnot. But I'm just like, are you serious, man? And I've never seen this before. Like in all of the videos I watched on Google, and, and that's why I wanted to make this video, guys, so that you can avoid some of these mistakes too. It, like, because this is so stupid. Like, this is a basic thing that should not happen, right? And it's really easy to, to miss this because in my mind, I just assumed that if my lead form was disapproved, my ad would be disapproved because they're connected, right? But apparently... Uh, you know, some of the smartest people in the world didn't think about that. So whatever, all right? So I'm uh, I'm putting in a request for credit because they basically just took my money. Like, this is this is just stupid. Okay. So, uh, lesson on this: uh, when you create your campaign, always pause it. Like, regardless of the platform, never run it right away. Go back through, make sure everything gets approved. It's not like Facebook where if one part of the ad targeting what whatever like you choose the like if you don't choose a special ads category it'll like it will disapprove your ad and tell you what to go and fix google doesn't do that and uh it's really disappointing quite frankly um because i was i'm just like i'm i'm really excited to use google ads and i think it's there's a lot of power in it but it's just been a disaster so yeah make sure your uh, lead form gets uh, approved now the good thing is is so once i get my credit and i get this approved I'm I'm excited, man, because I'm getting dollar fifty seven clicks uh, in a in a big industry. Twenty clicks. I mean, like like I said, I know the power of lead forms. This could be really a really good addition to my lead generation system. So, 
Am I pissed about this? Yeah, I'm laughing about it now because it's so stupid. But, you know, uh, I, I at the end of the day, I, I am still very excited about about using this. Um, let's go into, uh, let's see. Let's go into my display ad. Now, this is interesting. So I want to show you something. Um, and I, and this is was the original reason I got on the phone with Google. And I, I talked to the gentleman. He gave me good feedback on my campaigns and whatnot. And I called him. I'm like, um, my ad's been approved, but it's limited because it's saying something about Russia. And he got on, he got on like, yeah, that doesn't make any sense because I'm not targeting Russia. I don't say anything in my ad about Russia. I have no idea why Russia is involved. But just so you guys know, this is the kind of shit that you, you deal with sometimes. It's so dumb. But that's why you have to pay attention to these things and just you just got to handle it, man. It is what it is. So they put in uh, whatever to get rid of this, but that's not even like the main issue. So you see that it's under review now because I literally just went in and made these changes because I, I couldn't believe what happened. So again, I'm looking at this I, and I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about like, like <laughs> the, the industry that we're going after. These numbers are very good as far as engagement. 303 clicks. 85% uh, interaction rate, which, you know, that's okay. I'm, I'm not too worried. About. This is what I really saw though. 10 cents a click. Are you insane? And this was to my custom intent audience. So basically what I was, what I kind of compared this to was my, my Facebook targeting. Cause like you go on Facebook, you pick interest, you can double layer it or add as many layers as you want. Usually up to three is the most, but, um, if you guys are in my, like, like I teach my academy that I, I, with interest targeting, I always try to do multiple layers. You just get a lot more targeted. So for me, this custom intent audience was very similar in that type of targeting, except with even more power because you can literally take URLs, like actual websites, paste them into this audience. And that's the type of people that you're getting in front of, right? It's super powerful. Um, and then, you know, it's just like uh, images. Like I, I just, um, I, I imagine it being very similar to Facebook because I use images all the time on Facebook. It works great. And I mean, this shouldn't really be too much different because, um, you know, I'm taking the same images. Like I literally use the same exact image on Facebook and fa my Facebook ad cam campaign is killing it. So why wouldn't it work on Google, especially with this custom intent? And so when, uh, when I saw this, uh, 303 clicks, now I'm like jumping out of my seat, man. I am like fired up, excited. And you know how many leads you got? Make sure you can see this. One lead. 303 clicks. One lead. And again, I'm thinking to myself, there's got to be something wrong here. This is insane. Now, and, and just so you just so you're not like, oh, well, maybe it's the landing page, you gotta optimize your landing page. No. Okay. These are my landing pages. And I, I, I was excited to do this because I've never actually used this feature in ClickFunnels. I always just put up a page or use the uh, the lead for, uh, the lead form. But I'm like, you know what? I want to test two different pages just because uh, you know I'm always trying to, you know, test new things, whatnot. These aren't bad landing pages. And even if they were, they sh like even a bad landing page, if your marketing is on point, uh, your message, your offer is good, maybe your, your page just looks like shit, you should at least be converting at like 10%, right? I, I convert 25, almost 25% cold traffic to a survey, like filling out a form. I should be able to send cold traffic to a landing page and convert it at at least 10%. So I'm thinking, man, 303 clicks, I should have like at least 30 leads right now. The like worst case scenario, one freaking lead. And I'm just like, I'm, I'm like, uh, my head's ready to explode. Wondering what the hell is going on. And so I start doing some research and, you know, again, I don't know why people don't talk about this. They, they, t they tell you how great the, this platform is, that platform is. They don't talk about like, oh yeah, you need to do this one other thing to make it work. And actually, um, so my campaign now is under review because I've already made the changes. I don't even know if that's going to work, but here's what happened. Uh, let's go into, you know what? I'm, and I'm still trying to figure out this damn platform, dude. It's, it's just like basic shit. It's, it's like a pet peeve of mine. You make basic stuff so difficult. Um, what am I looking for here? I wanted to show you. Uh, let's see. Go back. Oh, uh, where the ads are shown. All right, so I found some videos doing some research and we go to placements. 
where ads are showed. And uh, so I, I watched a couple videos. I started doing research and read some blogs and whatnot about how to make Google display ads successful. How, how do you do, how do you work the GDN? How do you work GDN really good? How, how do you get results, conversions, things like that? And what I found was, is that apparently when you, when you don't exclude things like mobile apps, um, yeah, mobile apps just pretty much destroy campaign performance uh, across all the research I've done thus far. Uh, people who run millions and millions of dollars on these networks are saying, yeah, uh, when when Google started putting more of your ad spend in, onto these mobile apps, their their return on investment just took a nosedive. The, the cost per lead, cost per acquisition, cost per sale, everything just skyrocketed. And um, yeah, sure enough, I, I look into it, I'm like... I bet you that's what happened to my campaign. Look at this. Where ads are showed, all of this is mobile app. Everything is on a mobile app. And you think about it, like, look at this. Are, are you serious? My ad was shown 2,800 times on a jigsaw puzzle app. What? A calculator? Solitaire, really? <laughs> You're putting my ad in front of people while they're playing fucking solid. Uh, pardon my French, guys. I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to. Th this stuff just like kind of gets me fired up, man, because this is absolutely ridiculous. And, you know, I was expecting a little bit of a learning curve, but I almost don't even want to advertise on Google with this right now. I'm going to. I'm going to figure it out. You guys know me. I'm, I'm going to do it. But I, I am just appalled at, at this. This is insane. So. Uh, it took me another 30 minutes to try to figure out how to exclude all of these, which is a complete pain in the ass. But essentially, uh, let me see if I could remember how to do it. Uh, it's under, so if you, it's, you got to go to a specific ad group. So if we go to display, the, the display ad group, and uh, we click on settings, I'm going to show you guys how to get rid of uh, like, just don't put your your ads on mobile app. It's awful. Because it, you think about, I, I always think about the mindset of the platform people are on. Because see, in my mind, with when I'm running a Google display, when I'm doing Google display ads, my vision was people, I, I'm putting my ad in front of people just all over the internet. Not while they're playing fucking freaking solitaire or solitaire, or doing a jigsaw puzzle. Dude. No, that's stupid, man. I don't care what websites they've visited in the past. And how many times have you been on an app and you accidentally click an ad? I've done it a hundred times, right? So, uh, anyways, so let's see. I might have to make another video on this because I, I truly don't remember how to do this. Like this platform is just, I don't know, maybe I just suck. <laughs> you know, and with every platform, there's a little bit of a learning curve. But you can edit your uh, your targeting, which I want, I want to say it's in here. If it'll pull up, but I'm, I'm probably just going to do another video because I don't want to take any more of your time. But just know that there is a way. Like um, once you once you've uh, once you've run your campaigns and they're approved, there is a way to go back and and get rid of all of the mobile app targeting just completely. Um, also get rid of uh, all of the unknown stuff. So like, like I, I guess I was just kind of relying a little bit more on the algorithm to figure this stuff out. But these are things that now that I'm now that I see what's actually happening, I know what to what I'm looking for now, and I just need to know how to do it, right? So, uh, let's see. Yeah, okay, here it is. Actually, uh, placements right here. So we click on placements, and you want to exclude placements, and there will be an option. Uh, well, because I already have mine set here, but it'll be a couple of different options, uh, and it'll you can choose app categories. Now, unfortunately, I go through and click every single one of them individually, but it took me like two minutes to do. It's not a big deal. But you exclude placements and go through. Just get rid of every app. I don't care what industry it is. Well, I guess it depends on what you're doing. But when I when you're trying to generate like high ticket service leads, uh, yeah, mobile apps probably not going to be very good. It's just not. So, anyways, guys. I wanted to show you, if you want to get terrible results with your Google ads, this is how you do it, okay? Um, so I'm, I, I'm making all these changes. I am still going to do this because 
the engagement was really good. And actually, I don't even know if the engagement actually was good on the display network because it was probably a bunch of bullshit clicks. But at the very at the very least, my search campaign was doing really good. So that I'm very excited about. So I will be doing another video. Make sure you subscribe so you can get notified of that. Uh, leave a comment below if you have any questions or feedback. Maybe you see something that, that, that just, maybe I missed that uh, you're an expert in and you're just like, holy crap, this guy's a freaking idiot. <laughs> and, uh, you know, whatever. Leave, leave a comment. Give me your feedback. Let me know if you have questions. Give me a thumbs up if it was helpful. I hope this helps you avoid this same mistake. Fortunately, I didn't put a ton of money into it. But again, guys, this is the importance of testing, man. Don't, you know, don't, uh, don't, don't think you always need to have like, you know, you pay for a $1,500 course uh, for this and that, you know, courses are great. You, you do need to invest in your education, but at the end of the day, you're going to, and I tell this to all of my students uh, is you're going to learn the most when you just do this, right? I, I, I'm, I'm guiding you through the process or whatever and giving you the strategy, but the, the way you're really going to learn is just doing this over and over and over again. So yeah, fun stuff. So anyways, I appreciate you guys' time. Um, I'll have a couple links in the description if you want to join my free Facebook groups, online lead generation training and strategies. That's a great way to stay in touch. And uh, don't forget to check out maybe my Lead Gen Academy. Um, I am currently at the time of this recording, I am uh, still doing one-on-one -on -one coaching. So you invest in the Academy. It gives you all of my lead generation strategies that I use in my business. Uh, it's constantly updating. And uh, I give you 30 days of coaching personally, one-on-one -on -one to, to get your campaigns going. So uh, if that's something you're interested, check that out too. But if not, uh, either way, appreciate your guys' time. Take care, make sure you crush it, and I'll see you in the next video.